Maybe you've heard of the OnePlus One. It's a self-styled flagship killer aiming to swoop in from China and beat the Nexus 5 at its own affordability game. That's a tall order, but the OnePlus One fills it. It's so dirt cheap, and so incredible, that it's damn near unbelievable. What is it? A high-quality, $300 off-contract phone that runs Cyanogen mount a modded version of Android that's popular with tinkerers out of the box. A Nexus in everything but name. A 2.5 GHz Snapdragon 801 driven beast with a 5.5 inch, 400 ppi screen, and a hunky 3100 mAh battery. Another phone called the One. A $300 phone from a Shenzhen based startup that feels way well too good to be a $300 phone from a startup. A damn good deal. Design. From the second you lay eyes fingers on the OnePlus One, you can tell it's a high quality device, almost impossibly so for the $300 price tag. It's got a solid sort of heft to it, and the screen is raised just slightly over the silver edges, which gives you a fun surface to run your fingers around when you're nervous. It also looks great on the back, instead of opting for metal, your standard soft touch plastic, or something glossy and cheap feeling, the OnePlus One we tested sandstone black has a fabric Y sort of texture. It doesn't have any pull to it, and I'm inclined to think it's just a strangely rough sort of plastic, but it feels like the inside of a tablet cover, the part that sits against the screen when it's closed up. It's a unique and strange but not entirely unwelcome material. It feels like it'll get dirty quick like you can't set it down for fear that it'll get greasy and stained but after over a week of use it still looks great. It held up damn admirably to some time on my heinously unclean kitchen counter. The style of the OnePlus One extends beyond just a phone though. This is the first gadget I've had in a long time where I've actually been impressed by the charging apparatus. That's right. Its micro USB cable is badass. It honestly gives cloth coated cables a run for their money, and it's completely untangleable. The screen, a 1080 by 1920 pixel IPS LCD display, looks great in pretty much all scenarios. It doesn't have quite the contrast, deep blacks, or looks good outdoorness of an AMOLED display, but it is pretty. Definitely up to par with just about everything else out there. And then at the bottom of the screen, you've got your hardware buttons. Long passy on flagship Android phones but a feature the OnePlus One seems content to keep. One each for settings, home, and back, in order from left to right. In other words, reversed from the order of software buttons that you're used to on Android, which takes some adjustment. Also the settings button will default to bringing up an app's settings menu questionably useful. Though you can dig into Cyanogen mount settings to turn it into a traditional multitasking button. Fortunately all these buttons sit pretty compact at the bottom, and Cyanogen mount lets you turn them off altogether in favor of on-screen buttons. But I still found myself wishing they weren't there. Performance. Of course it helps that the hardware underneath that custom OS just screams. The OnePlus One rocks a 2.5 GHz Snapdragon 801 the fastest lil phone chip out there right now and backs it up with 3 GB bytes of RAM. The result is a phone that almost never stutters, whether you're just zooming around the home screen or playing some Hitman Go. I never ran into any performance issues except for a little freakout where Snapcat was freezing up, but I'm pretty sure that was Snapcat's fault. Camera. Okay, the OnePlus One's camera is not great, but it's not a total slouch either. The 13 megapixel shooter performs pretty well in daylight, but less so in the dark of the night. The One is beautiful. Its subtle curves and textured back really make it a pleasure to hold. It's the kind of hardware that makes people say who what is this in a good way. It's hard to make a rectangular slab feel unique. But the way the screen is set above the metal rim is both cool and subtle. It's an all-around good-looking piece of tech. It starts at $300, and just $350 for a 64GB model. I mean, what? That is nuts, and it makes up for pretty much any minor quibble you could possibly have with this thing. Should you buy it? Yes, in a heartbeat, if you can. The big catch with the OnePlus One is that you need an invite before you can shell out for one, and demand is far outstripping supply. So if you want to buy one of these you'll need to know somebody, or look into an invite by chance. And before you ask, no, I do not have any invites. It's $300 for a 16GB version, but more astonishingly just $50 more to upgrade to the 64GB. It's a steal. I think I'll be happy to move back to my slightly smaller Nexus 5, 
But if you can get your hands on an invite, the OnePlus One is a completely viable alternative to a Nexus, both in experience and in price. That's a pretty huge accomplishment. Is the OnePlus One the flagship killer it claims to be? It certainly could be but only if it finds a way to show up in force. For now it's an awesome oddity that will take some connections and or dumb luck to get your hands on. But if you get the chance, take it. Thanks for watching New Tech Channel. Stay tuned and subscribe for more videos.